And Peter King does a stellar job representing Long Island, serves on the House Intelligence Committee and the House Homeland Security Committee. Congressman, welcome back to the show. Peter, how you doing? Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas to you, Joe. And uh, actually, I'm just trying to figure out how does Frankie, Bur- uh, Frankie Five Burrow send out emails at 3 o'clock in the morning? I guess, look at my phone, and he's got it. He's like President Trump. You know, the president tweets all night. This guy's emailing all night. <laughs> <laughs> then he corrects himself. Like yesterday, I see at 3 o'clock, he says, he'd be on Joe's show today. And an hour later, how about tomorrow? It's scared. It's like 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. That's crazy. I know he doesn't stop. That's what we love about him, Frankie Five Burrows. Man. Well, Congressman, thanks for joining us because I know you got this whole shutdown looming. There's not going to be a shutdown, Congressman. Is there? Gonna, I, I'm feeling there's not going to be a shutdown that you will work it out down there. Yes? Yeah. I, listen, somehow it has to be worked out. It doesn't really make any sense. To have the shutdown. Uh, listen, I, I believe there should be a wall, but uh, and you know, Democrats voted for a wall for many years. Now they're against it. Somehow we can find a compromise. It's not. This is not something we should shut the government down over. Uh, and it's uh, to me, it'll make the Democrats look bad because they're doing it just to block the president. If we do it, then we're empowered. So Republicans are blamed for it. It's one of these deals that it's uh, it's, it's a lose lose for everyone, including the American people, and also including. And the people who got a salary for a week or so, and then and, and it is of course you want money. By the time you're finished, you're paying everyone and paying people overtime. It, it just it just makes no you know, no sense at all. We got to work it out. Got to show we can make the government work. Yeah, and you work with the president, and he and Chuck Schumer, like Chuck Schumer or not, were friends for many many years. And you know, from being in New York. Uh, Congressman King, this is the back and forth that probably Chuck Schumer and Donald Trump, the citizen, always had. And I'm feeling that something uh, will be worked out. But the role of the lame duck Republicans, what are they playing in all of this, Congressman King? Uh, well, some of them are angry, and I'm coming back to vote. They're bad, they lost. And uh, so it's, uh, you have to track them down to get them to come back to oh, vote. Oh, man. Lame duck, uh, uh, lame duck Republicans, uh, they feel that. You know, some of them feel that so much money was spent in the district against them. They're angry. The fact is, if you lose, you lose, and that's you know, that's the reality. And I think Republicans have to get get the best we can. It was coming from New York, New Jersey. We're deal makers, and that's why you mentioned before Chuck Schumer. I've been in the room when there's no cameras and Chuck Schumer and Donald Trump, and they complete each other's sentences. They don't agree on everything, but they each understands the other. And I think the two of them left alone to work out a deal. The, pre- the problem is that the Democrats have this whole resistance progressive movement, which doesn't want Trump to negotiate with anyone. And then on our side, we have some people in the Freedom Caucus who want no concessions at all when it comes to immigration. And somehow we have to find a common ground. And we need strict enforcement. We need a border wall. But we also have people who have been here for 20 or 30 years. You can't be deporting everyone. So we have to find a way to get it done and uh, make sure there's no illegal immigration in the future. Uh, Congressman King, we're seeing reports documenting the Russian influence campaign on social media in 2016. Shouldn't we be more worried about uh, China, really, than Russia, sir? China is much more of a threat to us than Russia. Russia is really, uh, it's it's really dropped way behind. Uh, China is, first of all, expanding in the Pacific. They're building these artificial islands. They are putting tremendous financial investments into Central America, Africa, Europe, which gives them a really a, uh, a hold over the governments in those areas. They are right now a very imperialistic country. Uh, they are, obviously the economy is strong. You know, it's, it's slowing down a bit, but it's far superior to whatever Russia has. So, no, I, I'm much more concerned about China than about Russia. I don't trust Putin. I think Russia is still dangerous. Mm. But as far as a long-term threat to the U.S., China is much, much more of a threat. And I, I know you're excited, Congressman King, to have Adam Schiff as chairman of the Intelligence Committee. Ooh, this is a scary thought, but that's what's going to happen, yes? Yeah, it, it really is. It's definitely going to happen. Mm. He's going to make it just one uh, endless persecution of uh, President Trump. And uh, they're going to look into everything possible. And I know, so that you've had a perfect life, and nobody's going to find anything in your life if they're looking for it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, no, not me. You know, except they can stop at every exit on the Jersey Turnpike and probably find something. Bad. <laughs> no, the fact is, they're going to go in. The idea is, I don't expect them to find anything per se, but you can tie the president down for two years when he should be negotiating That's with right. China, negotiating That's with Russia. Right. He should be negotiating and you know trying to stand down Iran, boost up Israel, 
uh, stand with Jordan and Egypt are allies. I mean, this is uh, that's what he should be doing instead of spending his time uh, defending himself against every baseless charge that's made. It's amazing because now he says, oh, now we're going to go. They don't have nothing in the Russia collusion. And then they go, oh, well, what about his business dealings with Moscow? Let's look into that now. I mean, how do you, you can't put a break on like Robert Mueller at $30 million, like I've been saying all morning, Congressman King. How, how do you put breaks on something like this? This has really gotten way out of control. I remember being in Moscow in 1998 with President Clinton, and our goal then was to get as many American businesses as possible investing in Russia and getting them investing in the U.S. The idea was that that was a way to bring Russia into the uh, you know 21st yeah, century yeah, yeah. to democratize them. So the goal, I mean, you go through Manhattan, and so many business people have dealings with Russians, with Chinese. So many of the condominiums uh, and apartments are owned by Russians and Chinese. That's, that's part of the world we live in. So if you're a major player like Donald Trump and you're involved in the hotel industry, the building industry, the construction industry, sure, certainly you're going to have dealings with Russians. And that was considered very appropriate, just like when all these Russian groups were contributing to the Clinton Foundation. I mean, this is and certainly now they're trying to criminalize every contact that it, you know they ever had with uh, Russians, which as an international businessman, that was his job to do. Yeah, Congressman Peter King. You know, uh, Peter, appreciate you being with us. So no, no shutdown. You're thinking uh, coming up this week. This is what your instinct is telling you, Congressman. That's my instinct. What I'm looking for today is to see what happens in the sentencing of General Flynn, who I think has gotten a terrible, yeah. terrible deal. The fact is Amen. they investigated him inside that on Russia. They yep. found nothing. Yep. This whole thing yep. on the supposed lying. Yep. Uh, even Comey told us at the time that they thought he was not lying, that he was talking and he gets some facts from stuff, but they, he gave no indication of lying. And basically, he was going bankrupt, and they were going to foreclose on his home, as I understand. You know, the, uh, the banks were, and he just wanted to end this and get it over with, and they were also threatening to indict his son. Congressman, from day one, you've been with us on the show on AM 970, The Answer on the Piscopo Show. Uh, I never take it for granted. We, Frankie and Al and Debbie and I never take it for granted. All the bosses here, uh, you are just a stellar example of the true public servant. And to Rosemary, to your family, may we say the merriest of Christmases. And let's have a great 2019, sir. Absolutely, Joe. we got to get together uh, with Danny Zodovin and Serena. We really have to do it. We love it. I would love to do that. Thank you, Congressman. Always. Merry Christmas. Christ- Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, sir. Christmas, all you got. But tell, tell Frankie Farber to leave me alone in the middle of the night. <laughs> no promises, Congressman. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman Peter King right there. Piscopo in the morning. Uh, Judge Knapp's going to join us momentarily. 730.